allow me to show you the future you helped to create. This is Hilary Goldstein, Editor-in-Chief of IGN Comics, here with a video review of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. This game is coming out on Xbox 360, Xbox PS2, PSP, PC, and just about every other console in the universe. So it, no matter what you have, you'll have the ability to purchase this game if you so choose. Marvel Ultimate Alliance is from Raven Software, the same fellas that brought you X-Men Legends and X-Men Legends 2. It's a game that's basically in the same vein. It's a top-down beat-em-up. You're just going to be button-mashing like crazy, beating the crap out of everything in sight. Uh, but they've done some upgrades to it. As you can see already visually, they've gone away from that sort of cell-shaded look. Uh, and gone to a much more detailed look, so it actually looks like a legitimate game now. Um, <laughs> when you look at Captain America, you're not just gonna see like a mush face, you'll actually get to see facial features on him, and when he throws his shield, it's not going to look like he's throwing a cardboard box. At Marvel Ultimate Alliance, the story begins with Doctor Doom attacking the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, and from there it just becomes a galaxy-spanning event. You're gonna visit Atlantis and the Squirrel Throne World, and you're gonna go to hell and fight Mephisto. So it really is gonna get you everywhere, and the best part of this is that it features 24 playable characters, 140 characters total, all from the Marvel Universe, and with the exception of the Punisher and the Hulk, who couldn't be there because their rights are owned by other video game companies, it's pretty much got every major cool Marvel character that you wanna see, uh, plus a bunch of Marvel characters you probably never wanted to see, like Blade. How in blazes did I get here? But it's great because this is a total Marvel geek out. So with all these characters and, you know, making allusions to a lot of past stories, it really is going to give something extra to people that love Marvel comics and read comics. But at the same time, it's still just a beat em up with characters that you know, such as Spider-Man, Thor, Wolverine, that even if you don't know anything about comic books, you can still get in there and have fun with it. And hey, if you want, you can actually learn something about the Marvel history that a bunch of nerds know about. Now the gameplay follows the same as X-Men Legends 2, except they've actually expanded on it in some really great ways. They wanted to streamline some of the fighting, and what they've done is they've gotten rid of those annoying health potions and energy potions. Instead, you know, enemies are going to just drop that stuff as you're beating them. So instead of having to micromanage all the time, you know, what's the AI doing with my health potions? It's like, oh, I've got to hop into this character so I can heal him. You don't have to worry about that anymore. You really can just focus on the character you're playing as at that moment, you know, and just have fun beating the crap out of things. But at the same time, they've added some interactivity to the powers that you're going to use. So, for example, Captain America, when he throws his shield, you can actually hold down the button and guide the shield for a couple of seconds. And as you level up that power, you're going to be able to control it for longer. And you can make that shield do some crazy stuff. You can basically break the laws of physics, but who cares because it's Captain America and he's beating the crap out of robots. They've also taken some of those cool, innovative little features that really take the gameplay and make it a lot more fun and make you a lot more involved in combat. They've taken that and they've added that to the boss battles. So what you're going to have are some sub-boss battles against like Scorpion and Rhino and other minor characters where it's, it's just a gangbang of people beating the crap out of them. That's the kind of stuff you're used to seeing. But when you get to bigger boss battles like, say, fighting Galactus, it's actually going to mix in a minigame. So what's going to happen is you take over a Silver Surfer and you basically have to match a series of button presses that are quickly timed and fly around Galactus and shoot him in the back. And there's going to be some other events like that with almost all of the big bosses, uh, like Ymir the Frost Giant, who you meet when you're in Asgard. Uh, you jump on top of his giant frozen club and then you have to do a series of button presses to do damage to him. That would have been nice if Ravensoft had figured out a way to combine beating the crap out of things and doing these minigames, because the only way you can hurt any of these characters is to actually do the minigames to hurt them. Uh, hopefully with the next iteration, and of course there's going to be another one of these, because there always is, uh, hopefully they'll be able to find a way to kind of merge those two so it's a little bit more of, a, of an even flow, because it does get a little bit old after a while that you rarely ever face a big boss that you aren't just doing a stupid minigame to beat. As much fun as it is to pummel people, toss them around, jostle them, electrocute them, that's the, as, as good as that is, the puzzles are in the opposite range. They're just not fun and they're not innovative in any way. Once again, you're in a game where you're going to be pulling blocks and moving them around. And even in the moments where Raven's trying to add some sort of clever puzzles, they simplify them too much. Like, for example, one time you go up to the statue of a god and it reads, Remember that I'm the god of the north wind. And later on you come up to these two individual statues that you can rotate. Now, 
pretty much anybody with half a brain cell will figure out one's got to face north, one's got to face west. But as if that isn't enough, they actually put markers on the ground so you know where to stop turning them. Uh, you know, it's not puzzles for dummies. People are actually smart enough that they can figure out little things like this themselves. And, and if they can't, that's why we have guides. So that, that is probably the one downside. Uh, Raven really needs to figure out a way uh, for the next iteration to come up with some innovative puzzle design and to understand that just because this is a game for the mass market doesn't mean that it's a game for people who drive on the short bus. Just like X-Men Legends and X-Men Legends 2, this is a one to four player game. You can hop online or you can play it on a single box, whatever you want. Uh, people can hop in and out, it's pretty easy. And you can play cooperatively through the entire story mode or you can you know, let the AI characters be handled. And, and actually the AI is, is smart enough that it, it, they won't get killed very often, so you don't have to worry about managing the team so much. And if you play with your friends, they probably will get killed more often because, let's face it, your friends are idiots. But what's cool that they've added this time is that along with a cooperative mode, they have a competitive play mode, an arcade mode. This still lets you play through the same story mode, except that now you're competing for points. So whoever gets a kill on a guy gets points for that. And so what you're going to see is you might have one friend who's going to stay in the back, and while the other guys are, are beating up an enemy, he'll just come in at the last minute just to get that final hit in on them, steal all the points from you. So it's kind of a fun battle because it's, while you're still trying to beat the game, you're also trying to beat your friend because there are point scores at the very end of each level that tally up tokens for different things like who got the most kills, um, who died the least, those kind of things. So once you finish smashing in Doom's stupid little face and you've beaten the game, saved the universe, you get to watch a cool cutscene by Blur Studios, the same guys that did those awesome cinematics for X-Men Legends 2, then you're going to get what's called an epilogue ending. And those are basically these short little cutscenes that are mixed together based on the choices you've made throughout the game. And they decide essentially the fate of the entire Marvel Universe. And they give you incentive to play through the game again and make some different choices. Marvel Ultimate Alliance is like the perfect summer movie for your console. It's got lots of explosions, doesn't necessarily make all the sense in the world. It's not going to win an Oscar, but you're going to have fun the entire time you're there.